I've never been really good at making art for my games. And that's something that, especially in my new upcoming game, Hexagod, I started to use as a good, a design constraint. How can I design a game that doesn't necessarily need the art to be good, but the gameplay loop is just fun and that will hook the player in enough. And that became Hexagod. Hexagod is a minimalistic village builder where you get to uh, place hexagon tiles, you get to uh, you get to play cards, and you get to control your little villagers here and tell them where to go. And you get to place them down and you get to create uh, all these different uh, great little effects. And the gameplay loop is just fun. But I just released the demo over on Steam a couple days ago, not a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago, man, time flies. A couple weeks ago, I released Hexagod's demo over on Steam. And it's been really fun to see people play it and give me feedback. Retromation made a great YouTube Let's Play about it and Orbital, Orbital Potato did. And a bunch of people here on YouTube or my Twitch community or my Discord community all went through and gave me some great feedback. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback is if I open up uh, Hexagod, or the actual demo here, uh, is that they want tile placement. Although it's fun and interesting, they want it to be a little more interesting. And you can see right now, A, the tiles look a little bit worse than the current art I put into the game. But B, the other problem is that I have about six base types in the game. And base types in the game, you can see up here, if you hover in the corner up there, we have grassland and water. Pretty much the only thing that these do is they differentiate what uh, what buildings can be placed where. So if we buy some cards here from the store. You can see if we get a, a little bit more favor here, we'll feed the villager two food. If we get a little bit more favor here, you can see here that we can place the berry bushes on these grassland tiles, but not on the water tile. So that is the big thing that base types do currently in the demo, which is fine, but it's a little uninteresting where you specifically place things becomes a bit more of let's just place tiles for tile sake instead of like let's like strategically place this tile because of this other event and my solution to that is going to be uh, improving the tile placement logic by adding in subtypes. So I've redefined the base types to have a bunch of, uh, I think six placeable base types and then Tundra and Mountain are gonna be non-placeable base types. And then each of those base types can have a subtype added. So think grassland tiles can become a fertile soil grassland. It can become a valley grassland. It be can become a meadow grassland. And this is the interesting thing. Those subtypes will have specific bonuses for the various tiles you can place. So if we had a farm tile and you place it onto fertile soil, that farm might give you one additional food resource every time your worker works that tile. Now that is a small little benefit. You could do um, faster work time or more charges, uh, more uses of like the berry bush, or you could do that yield thing like we said for the farm. And that I think is just enough to make tile placement interesting because specifically speaking, the way you will transform your tiles is going to be having six tiles all around a base tile and basically complete a recipe for the tile to transform. Mm -hmm. An example I always like to show is going to be a desert tile. If we place three water tiles all around that desert tile, let's flip back to the new art because it just looks so much better. Uh, if you have a desert tile and you place uh, a few more water tiles around that desert tile, it's going to transform. Let's go desert here and we'll do a water tile and a water tile. This is my debugging panel up here. Super useful to, to create something like that. And we'll go grassland, grassland, in grassland, you can see there's an animation for the, the change here, but the, the art didn't actually change. That's something I need to work on. But you can see up in the top corner, it becomes a beach desert instead of just a desert. And there's a bonus effect right there that says hut plus one housing. So if we played a hut here, we would get plus two housing instead of the normal plus one housing right there, which is awesome. That is enough interest and it's enough hidden replayability for you as the player to come back and learn about these specific recipes for these subtypes. Now my goal is to make them not super hard to find and maybe hint at ways to find them and, and give you some tools so you don't have to have this memorization of all of these 18 tile types. That's a UI UX thing we can solve later. But the big problem with this tile system is the art. And like we talked about at the beginning, I'm not very good at art. This is where we're currently at in the game, 
It is a minimalistic art style because again, that's a design constraint and it works. The gameplay loop here is fun and enjoyable. And like what you get to do, the, the squishy UI, opening and closing the, the shop and buying new packs and placing new tiles, it is really fun to do. But with only five base types in this game, you have grassland, you have desert here, you have a water and a mountain. You can see, even if you're colorblind, I think the hue variation would be enough for you to see at least a differentiation between the different tile types. But if we expand that to 18 to 30 different types of tiles, including all those sub tiles, I don't care how many colors I put in the game. I'm going to be confused with where it, is, where it is at. And so that's where art comes into play. And like I said, I suck at art. That's a big problem with adding in art to these tiles. And the second big piece is going to be the scope of the game. If you all of a sudden start to add art to your game, you're increasing the scope of your budget. But I think the tile placement will be interesting. interestingly, it will add enough interest to the game that it's worth potentially adding a bunch of scope to the game. So in the last couple of days, I hopped into Affinity Designer 2 and I dove into the process of making this tile art. And I'm a bit nervous because although the new art and my ideas should make the kind of the, the screenshots of the game look better and the gameplay feel more fun and it's gonna have a lot of benefit, what I currently have in the game, although it's not great, it works. And there's a fear inside of me of changing the art of a game because if I change the code and I change the system, like the player doesn't get to see that. You don't get to see the code of my game unless you like go in and reverse engineer it and then start looking at all the spaghetti code I created. But even then, I highly doubt you could figure out my code because only my brain knows how it works this way. And, and then there's, it's trash code, but it, but it works. The code just works and that's fine. But if I change the art, everybody sees the art being changed. And so if I move in a direction where it gets worse, that's a risk. But if I move in a direction that gets better, that's a reward. And as someone who sucks at art, I don't have the confidence in my ability to do art well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how I actually approach changing the art and not necessarily phrasing this like a tutorial, because like I said, I don't think I'm good at art. So I don't want to tell you how to do your art, but I want to tell you how to, how I approach making this art look better, making this art eventually become where are we making this art eventually become the current version of the demo, which I, I see. I mean, it, it looks a lot better. I, I It really doesn't. I'm, I'm probably where I got, but how do I approach that process? And the first thing I want to um, let you know is that colors matter a ton. So if you go to a site like low spec, this is uh, actually, if we go specifically to uh, Hexagod palette, this is the palette I started with for Hexagod. I've since ex expanded and adjusted some of the hues and, and values and stuff like that, but color theory is important. So coming to a site and starting with a base color palette can give you something that works nicely together. And based off the vibe, you can come to low spec here, grab the palettes, just sort by uh, highest downloaded, and start going through and finding a palette that just catches your eye or one that might give you uh, the vibe you're working with. You can always change it later, but I think starting with a decent palette is like tying your shoes correctly before you go for a walk. It'll at least encourage you to not trip immediately after you leave the house and step on your own shoe. The second thing I'm going to say is you should go and look at other games that you enjoy. Um, you might watch a game like Balatro and see the success of it and see how uh, juicy all of the, the, the play style in Balatro feels and how nice it is and not have any idea how to do those effects. But if you say, I really like the style of Balatro, it gives you a, a guiding star of something to start working toward. Or maybe you go and you see, like me, you see Stacklands and you love the look of Stacklands. So you're like, okay, I love this minimalistic style, but I don't quite have the art skills to do all these little cards. So instead you make a minimalistic tile placement game called Hexagod, uh, which again is on Steam if you're interested in playing the demo. The current build is not over there. Um, Hexagod, Goff, God. Hexagod, it's over there right now. It's, it's currently not the, the, the art build, but I'll, we'll get that up there shortly. Um, so the, the, the two things again, or I guess I have three things. The first one was use a palette. The second one was go look at games that you enjoy and start seeing the style you like so you can start developing your own palette. I call this the research phase of playing a bunch of games or watching a bunch of Let's Plays of YouTube games and seeing what in those games you like and starting to identify your own taste and flavor. Because at the end of the day, the most unique thing about your game is that you made it. And so if you make something that you think looks good and that you enjoy playing, 
it's, it's going to resonate with somebody else. I almost guarantee it. I can't make that guarantee because there's so much to game development. And the final and the third place is going to be to um, experiment and get feedback. I have a Discord community full, absolutely full of people who love giving each other feedback. And especially doing this live on stream yesterday, which makes me full of anxiety. I, I, it's like people can see my art, make suggestions, and like, I, I think I'm a bad artist, so they can tell me how bad I am. And th th no one said that, but that's in my head. That's what I'm going in at. But being able to make a change, like here, like trees, forests are great. Here was my forest to begin with. And then toward the end of the stream, we are able to eventually get to the point of having this as the forest tile. And we changed water from like looking like this to having a little bit more of a stylistic part. Um, hills change, we got mountains down there and we have a cute little snowman inside of our tundra hex. Um, and so the actual process of this, starting with that palette, having a general idea, like uh, sometimes I'll hop into my painting app of choice, Leonardo, and just start painting out maybe what the what the what the tiles could look like if we start putting in some some water here and and trying to get the the vibe of what I'm trying to do or or maybe drawing some mountains to get the general shape out here and um, going a little bit Bob Rossi and, and kind of getting we'll have we'll have light on this side and then we can have um, some some darker colors on, on the right side and you you slowly start to get the composition down if you just kind of play with it like anything in life, I feel like you have to warm up and get into it. And yesterday, tearing through all eight of these types really helped me get into a flow. And although I know I have to build about 15 more tiles out there, I think now that I have a basic style for these tiles done and hopping into, uh, this is Affinity Designer 2. Not sponsored, Affinity Designer 2. I'll, I'll put a link below. If you're interested in a nice vector art tool, it is, uh, I think it is, you have to, pay for it. Maybe there's some sort of free trial for a long time. It's a good tool. I, I, I quite like it quite a bit and it gets the job done. Now, hopping back in to the game, you can see it, it helps out a lot. It gives the vibe, uh, a good vibe of like what you're looking at. And more than anything, as I add in these subtypes, it's eventually going to become something that you can see the differentiating factor. You can see this is a desert, this is a water, this is a forest. And I think even if you're colorblind, there might be enough distinct differentiation in all of these different tiles that you could in fact tell the difference at a glance what you're looking at. And I think that for me is uh, is a good sign of success in this, uh, in this project, in Hexagod. And I'm starting to ramble a bit, but I want you to know that I'm here for you. Uh, my Discord is full of people willing to give feedback. Um, if you come over on Twitch, I can give you some feedback live. Um, go check out the Hexagod demo. I'm giving you too many action items. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Um, until next time, I'll be Aramis. You're better at art than you think. I guess I'm talking to myself there. And you can always change things in the future and continue to improve. Um, but I'll see you around. Until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.